Yeah. Do you know what, that when that woman came up to me at LAX, she was she's referring to a woman over there, and there's there's a lot of things on the table, and the <coughs> and the weird energy that squirted out of me. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Was you know like 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 Plato studied steam engines, like the Platonic engine, where you just heat up a bunch of water and you only give it so much egress that it's like you get, if you put it at like per, like in different positions, you'll make a thing spin around. It's a Platonic engine, right? The the it's like steam escaping. It'll find the nearest escape. It'll find the weakest membrane to squeak through. Now, is it that membrane's fault? So, for instance, why have we been a misogynistic culture longer than we've been a racist culture? Like, don't get aggravated by my assertion there, but like, <laughs> why legit, do we, man. why are we quicker to club women than we are to like, 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 why are we so able to like overcome uh, pigment before we are able to? Is this question for anybody on the panel? <laughs> I, in a sense, when that woman said to me at the airport, she said, how come you don't tell that woman to shut the fuck up? I, I, I said, well, because of my mother-in-law, you know, like I, 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 it was fake. It was like all. It was like where the. It was an essentially misogynistic like valve that that energy went through. I'm like, Woof, with women like that, if you think women talking louds a gonna get my goat, you should deal with what I deal with on Christmas Eve. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I was just trying to escape a situation. The steam was so high. It, that was the weakest membrane. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have been. I would. If it was the 1950s, would I have said to that woman like, "Bite your tongue, lady. <laughs> You're know your place. Give me cornflakes." Oh no. <laughs> Is that before? That got much worse in the second part. <laughs> <laughs> That's my question. Answer I, it. I think it goes. <laughs> oh fuck. Ten um, seconds. Nine. <laughs> eight. I think it comes down to. I mean. Just talk, talking about it, and I think a lot of people that feel like misogyny is not a problem, they haven't dealt with it or thought about it or had a woman in their life that actually who doesn't have a woman that. in their life? Like uh, that's the thing. I think to answer your uh, question, Dan, uh, uh, I think misogyny, so misogyny is 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 bigger than racism. I don't know by what percentage, but I think it's happening because. Uh, women are 50%, like, women are a bigger threat because there's more of them. And, uh, and men or that are, men that are threatened by women are going, you know what I mean? They're going to be threatened because it's half of the people and it's also their mother. <laughs> it's also their mama yes, is a fucking you, woman, you know? Because your memories of becoming a man involve becoming abusive to your mother. Uh, like, 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 uh, in a lot, it's like, you're, the day, just shut up, mom, I don't want to do this. Because right, was, and you didn't, as a white kid, you weren't growing up going, shut up, black guy like <laughs> that yeah if you're so it's all directed at women and not race i like yeah, how we've so, solved that problem race yeah racism's I, I, over misogyny needs we some need to bring uh, race to work back on into puberty. it so <laughs> i'm so glad there's no women up here to defend themselves right your now. mom's got your mom's gonna hit you today <laughs> we'll tell I, I, women I like, how to deal with that I, I, oh. like for, for all the women in the audience watching a bunch of white dudes or not white dudes, white dudes minus one he's close enough get, sit the fuck down Look at that hat. He's close enough watching to white. Watching a bunch of men, uh, watching a bunch of men hat talk about women. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the guy, his, his t-shirt is on upside down. Or has he got a shirt on? Yeah, it's a, I don't yeah. think you what, can put a t-shirt on upside down. I'm going to say that. <laughs> should, I, should I try? I mean, you no. can't. It'd be hard. It's, yeah, it's, it's fits weird. Yeah. <laughs> It's more of a tube top. A little tight. <laughs> Jeff, you got derailed midstream. You were about to incite women to hate the show. Please continue. Uh, no, nah, it's... No. The, the women already hate the show. <laughs> <laughs> watching, watching three men stumble into the realization that, they're, that, 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 that this is the easiest thing in the world that it always has been is probably, you know, just as good for whatever money they paid for their badges. <laughs> As anything, I mean, I, uh, it's, uh, I mean... Because men can't imagine what it's like to be a woman. We can't. We can think we can. We fucking can't. I'm going to. Watch. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> Spencer, Dungeon Master, me waking up of being a woman. Jeff, play appropriate music. <laughs> How much time do we have left? Uh, we got loads of time. Okay. You wake up. In a bedroom. It's empty. Because you make less money than men.
I get out of bed. All right. You're still in the bedroom. I put I put on whatever outfit will walk the line between me being branded a slut and uh, me being dismissed as a human being. You manage to thread the needle once more like millions of women across the earth do every morning of their lives. Slutty outfit! Can I ask can I ask what I'm wearing? Oh uh, no. Okay. That's probably a good idea. I go down to uh, get into an Uber. All right. Where I'm certain that someone will simply drive me to work. It's doing the thing where it's like a block away, but it's just spinning around for the last five minutes. It shows up, and the guy makes no indication that that wasn't supposed to be part of his job. I, I get in. Oh, he touches you. I file a complaint with Uber. It doesn't matter. He gets promoted to head of Uber. <laughs> you get to your job or whatever. I get, I get out of the Uber and I run for president. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I'm fucking ending it. I've played nice. I'm running for president. You lose, yeah. More people hated me than liked me? Uh, it turns out. You did what you had to do. Are but... you saying I lost the popular vote? No, that's what's crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's our, you know, you might have won even harder if not for, you know, the striking. Okay, that's too political. Sorry. I was going to talk about the Voting Rights Act. <laughs> <laughs> well, I walk into the woods and I wait for someone to need me. No one, yeah. No one needs you, but everyone wants something from you. And it's your problem. All the trees are mad. I, I go up to one of the trees. Okay. It ignores you. <laughs> I thought I just heard you grumbling things about me being... A... Why are you being such a bitch? <laughs> you know, we've been growing here for hundreds of years. No one's coming through being talked about by us before until you, so you're the problem. All right, go further into the woods. All right. You do that. Um... You find, uh, uh, you find, uh, you know, you're, you're feeling, you're feeling cramping up. You're cramping. <laughs> oh, no. I, 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 go, I, I, I pay attention to that feeling. It's, it's worse than what men have to deal with on their daily lives. <laughs> but you just, you don't even, you know, you don't even mention it unless it's kind of crippling you and making you in bed. The fact that you're walking around means it's not even worth mentioning, even though it's terrible, crippling agony. I, I go home, and I, pour, I put on some tea, and I read a, a book. The book has all sorts of opinions on stuff that you should do or represent that don't even have anything to do with what you think you should do in life. I, I turn on the television. I and feel I'm like we peaked. Have we peaked? <laughs> Sorry. On the television, it's more of the same. The media is rewarding men for doing things that hurt you and punishing you for doing the things that demand your equal rights. Yeah, I see, this is what I mean. It's just, it's just the sad reality of life. It's, I, 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 try, I try to do comedy about the situation because I think it'll be so funny that it'll make people, yeah. Like, yeah, uh, why aren't women funny? This is terrible. Who said that? Everybody on earth. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I try to prove them wrong by being really uh, dirty and lateral. You do amazing stuff, and a couple alt comedians and people in the scene are like, yeah, she's getting really big. But, you know, you've done everything that everyone... I, I don't know. I, 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 I just say a really funny joke. I'd say a really funny joke that's, like, kind of fucking crazy because it's inappropriate. And oh, like... it goes over well. You get what's, uh, what's considered a polite chuckle, and after the show, seven guys try and hit on you saying, you know, you're actually pretty funny. Yeah. Now can I be president? No. <laughs> All right, so... Well. Spencer Crittenden, world's best feminist. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Male, male feminists. Yeah. World's best male feminists. But, like, to really answer your question, I really think you're talking about abuse. 
You were talking about later abuse. that same night. <laughs> you were talking about the mental abuse earlier. I think men have that problem. They don't want to accept the fact that you know they've you know maybe abused women you know emotionally, even if it's unintentional or not. They don't want to acknowledge it. And I think yeah. that's the biggest problem. Oh no, that's the most offensive thing. Racially, I always repeat that joke that our late friend Mario from the drawing room said. It's like you can call a white guy a honky, you can call him a cracker, but if you call him a racist, he gets really bent out of shape. Um, <laughs> if you ca you can call a man anything you want, but if you say that he's abusing women, most they, they'll, they'll fucking choke you. To <gasps> what? Yeah. The, but we do. I, I think that you know we should probably. It's all you have to do is just to, like put a little radar tag on your lapel and just be like, oh, how am I interacting with? with anybody, with people. Just, that's what my therapist is always saying. She's like, you don't have to quit drinking. She said that. <laughs> she said, just notice when you take a drink. That's it. That'll be the beginning of it. Yeah, Your look in the cup, see it. what's up. <laughs> oh, vodka again. <laughs> More <laughs> vodka. Like but yeah, I think, what, but that's why... That's why people that we often complain about, people that are outspoken, and it was like, it was like we go like, oh, they get tweeted out. So we had our friends from Redu Reductress on the podcast, and they talked about the, the women that stand out, that, that they might be just comedically saying, hey, look, look at this phenomenon. It's like saying, look at Joan of Arc. It's like, it's like there's more kindling there, and there's drier weather, and there's easier ways to start fires, and, and, and it turns to witch burning way faster when someone is just saying, hey, be aware of this. Like, uh, it, 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 but like, being aware of something doesn't mean someone wants your pants. No one's going to take your pants. Like, like you, if, if privilege is real and you admit that it's real, it means you have privilege. It means no one can have your pants. Like, yeah, like, you can't pry my pants from my cold hard. <laughs> cold, you know what I meant. Cold dead, cold dead heart. Fingers. Cold dead dick. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while to see things that way too. It was like because I, I, as I've said a thousand times, it's like I get it. You're a doughy white guy. You've been born. You come up through the system. You you endure. What <laughs> the you system. The system. The mean yeah. streets. You're out there in Gen Pop. <laughs> 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 the system. Okay, granted. Just what, click your heels, Dorothy. You've been in Oz the whole time. What you perceive as the system. And then, and then when you start hearing talk about how you've had it easy, how are you supposed to react if you have an ounce of salt in your salt bladder? I don't know how medicine works. Salt <laughs> bladder. Yeah, people feel really insecure. Really, uh, men feel really insecure really quick when that's even challenged, which I think is a weird thing, and they don't right. even want to meditate on it mm -hmm. at all. I would argue the one thing is that the one thing that unites us all is that we all would have the same reaction if we were all told, "Shut up, stop complaining. You've had it easy." We all—it's just that there's got to be somebody at the top that actually has had it easy. Right. Th those people are gonna hear that. They're gonna take that the wrong way. It—it—it—it it, 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 it is the same reaction, though. It's like it is the the thing that we say to each other when someone says, uh, "I I work as a, a, a clicky clock clack clacker, and I I don't get enough click clacks for my click clook." Like, you say the same thing to that person that if someone said it to you, you would fucking punch him in the face, which is like, sh like, like, fuck you. Like, like you privileged piece of, you, you always like dump that shit downhill. Like, like you dump it down. Every time there's a strike, every time someone sues a corporation because a jart hit killed their kid, like, it, it, like, like we always side with the corporation. We have this human tendency to be like, fuck you, you whiny piece of shit. You should fucking love capitalism. Fucking rules. <laughs> What was my point? I don't know. Was, watch CISO. I think your <laughs> I think your point was the guy that was burnt by hot coffee at McDonald's really deserved to win that lawsuit. Yeah. That, that coffee was too hot. It was too hot. It was too hot. People don't know, but it was too hot. It wasn't a goddamn guy. It was a fucking old lady. <laughs> oh, I didn't know who it was. I just remember Kramer trying it on Seinfeld. <laughs> I just saw that episode. That's syndication. <laughs> it did. They had, like, the Johnny Cochran, like, like analog guy. Yeah. Did, you, did you watch it on CISO? <laughs> Probably. They have yeah. a lot of archived NBC comedy. I mean, if... if Monty Not a community because that's co-owned by Sony. But. They got Saturday night, late nights next day. Next day. Next day. That's Saturday awesome. night live. Yeah. That's Sunday morning, not live. Man, when you subscribe to CISO, you're really subscribing to humanity. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I say if you life. CISO, say so. Yeah, I've been saying that for <laughs> yeah. so long. Everybody, just go out there. Tell the world. 